Kind Nature School. It's Miss Cheryl here, and today we're going to talk about what animals do in the winter time. So when you think about winter, you think no leaves, it's cold, it snows. So a lot of animals have to adapt to that environment in order to survive. So animals do three things. Animals will either stay active all year round, they will migrate, or they will hibernate. So animals that are active in the winter time do not hibernate. They do not sleep all winter long like some animals do. They do not migrate, so they don't go anywhere. Instead, they stay put. So in order for them to survive in this cold area or environment, they, they have to adapt to the weather, which means they kind of have to change their behavior and their, their physical body changes as well. So one thing that they do is in the fall, they will eat a lot and they will gain a fat layer in order for them to help stay warm in the winter time and it stores a lot of energy for their body to use to survive. Another way that they will adapt is they will grow a very, very thick coat and this coat will help them keep warm. So it's just like an extra layer, kind of like how we put on a really, really thick coat when we go outside to keep warm. Another thing that they will do is they will go out and collect a bunch of food and store it or stash it where it's easy for them to find. One other thing that they will do is they will find other places or a really, really good shelter for them to escape those cold winter days. So a couple examples of Animals that are active in this area are squirrels and eastern cottontail rabbits. So this is a fox squirrel at one of my feeders. Hello little guy. Squirrels spend a lot of the winter foraging for food. In the fall, they will stash away different hickory nuts, acorns, walnuts, and save them for later. Then they will come down from their nest and dig them up and eat it then. Um, other times you'll see squirrels at bird feeders because it has a lot of seeds and different nuts and they'll take that opportunity. Squirrels need a safe place to spend the winter. They will either spend the winter in holes in trees called cavities, or they will build their own nest out of leaves in trees called drays, like pictured here. Eastern cottontail rabbits will spend the winters um, in big thick brushes and wood piles and hollowed out logs anywhere where they can be protected from the cold winter wind and weather and also away from predators. So pictured here is a shrub and you notice some of its bark is missing. A part of the eastern cottontail rabbit's diet in the winter is bark off of trees, they'll eat twigs and buds. Can you think of any animals that hibernate? Bears hibernate, groundhogs hibernate, snakes, turtles, all kinds of different animals hibernate for the winter time. The reason why animals hibernate is because there's not enough food sources for them available in the winter time. If they don't hibernate, there's not enough food for them so they won't be able to survive. So instead, they sleep all winter long and when they wake up in the spring, there's plenty of food for them to eat. 
there's a couple things that animals have to do to prepare for hibernation. One thing that they have to do is they have to build up a nice fat layer all around their body. So in order for them to do that, they have to eat a lot. So they eat and eat and eat. They build up that fat layer. And that fat layer not only keeps them warm, they use that fat layer as a source of energy. So when they're asleep, their body uses up that fat and that energy buildup to help them make it through the winter time. Another thing that they have to do is they have to have a special place for them to hibernate. It has to be below freezing. It has to be below freezing because if it's above freezing, it gets a little too cold for them. A lot of animals will hibernate in caves. They will hibernate in old burrows or underneath the soil. They will hibernate underneath old wood piles, leaf piles, anywhere where there's a nice safe place for them to hibernate. The place where an animal hibernates has a special name. It's called a hibernaculum. So there are a couple of animals that will talk about that hibernate in Ohio. The first one is the eastern box turtle. And the second one is the big brown bat. This is our male eastern box turtle. And reptiles do something that's similar to hibernation. Reptiles brumate. So brumation is when a reptile um, slows way, 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 way down since they're cold blooded. Their body temperature is the same temperature as it is outside. So their bodies slow way, way, way down. So they pretty much go to sleep. So in compared to hibernation, animals that hibernate have to eat and build up that fat and then they go to sleep. Animals that brumate skip that step. So a lot of reptiles go into brumation. So unlike other turtles, box turtles will brumate in the soil instead of the water. They will stay buried in the soil until the soil reaches about 50 degrees and that allows their body to warm up and get more active and then they will emerge from the soil. This is a picture of a big brown bat and the big brown bat is one of 14 species of bats that are found in Ohio. Only a few of the bats migrate south for the winter, the rest of them hibernate. Bats will hibernate in caves, they'll also hibernate in crevices of rocks, and they'll hibernate in old trees, and they will even hibernate in attics of houses and buildings. Unfortunately, a deadly disease was introduced to the U.S. called White Nose Syndrome. White Nose Syndrome attacks hibernating bats. It is a fungus that attacks bats, nose, wings, and other parts of the body. And the fungus wakes up the bat during hibernation and the bat wastes energy flying around looking for food. So that eventually kills the bat. It's a highly contagious disease that's spread from cave to cave, especially when travelers enter bat caves and go to another cave. That's how this disease is spread to these bats. And since 2006, it has killed millions of these bats. There are a lot of great people that are helping bats with white nose syndrome. Bat biologists from different agencies are studying these bats to help slow the spread of white nose syndrome from cave to cave and they are helping to increase the, these population numbers and making sure these bats and populations are healthy.
But when an animal migrates, that means that animal moves from one place to another. The reason why animals migrate is because of the colder weather. So they won't be able to survive the colder weather. And another thing that drives migration is food availability. So a lot of birds that are insect eaters will move way, way, way south, uh, South America, Central America, Mexico, that area during the winter time because there are plentiful insects for them to eat during the winter time. Because if you think about it, if they were to stay up here, do you see any insects or bugs flying around? No, there's not a whole lot of food for them to eat. So instead, they will, they will move wherever their food is available. So some examples of animals that migrate that I'm going to talk about is the one of the farthest migrating birds called the black pole warbler and a migrating insect called the monarch butterfly. Hey, this is a bird called a black pole warbler and these guys spend the summer in western Canada and every fall they fly all the way down to Puerto Rico and South America. During that journey, it is over 1,800 miles and they fly non-stop in the span of three days. To prepare for migration, they have to double their body weight. Monarch butterflies are very unique because they're the only butterfly that migrates. In the spring, it takes four generations of butterflies to reach Canada and in our area. There's a special generation that is born that makes the great migration down to the Oyama forests in Mexico. Thousands of these butterflies gather in the oil mall for forests and they will overwinter there. Then in the springtime, the cycle will start all over again. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope you learned a little bit about what animals do to survive in the winter time. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. We are here to answer any questions you may have, and I hope you have a great day. We will see you next time. Bye.